What's up, guys? Welcome back to Weekly Weird News. And today's episode is sponsored by Honey and by Squarespace. And you're going to hear more about them later in the show. But first, the weird news. The last month, a boy flew a little close to the sun, and that boy's name was Jacob Wool. He was banned from Twitter.com for spreading lies and misinformation and for creating various fake accounts. And the reason we know this, and the reason Twitter knows this, is because little Jacob Wool told USA Today that that's what he was doing. He just put it out there. Taking away young Jacob's Twitter was the right thing to do, but it also was kind of bittersweet. I mean, his Twitter timeline was almost indistinguishable from satire, and his most popular recurring series was, of course, the tweets recounting things that Jacob had definitely heard while sipping coffee in real, actual hipster coffee shops. Here's one example. I was in a hipster coffee shop, safe space, here in LA, and the libs were whispering to each other about how Donald Trump is doing great for the economy, got them a raise at work, and will definitely be reelected in 2020. And we've gone over these before, but there are dozens of similar tweets in which Jacob Wall overhears young Democrats heaping praise on their president for various things. Or at least there were many tweets and tweets that mocked those tweets from other users. We say there were those tweets because, again, he got suspended from Twitter because he's an admitted liar. Yeah. In fact, it's entirely possible that Jacob Wall actually lied about what he heard in those coffee shops as shocking as that may be. And it's it's wow. not just a theory because he admitted it in that USA Today oh, yeah, article. That's right. He was like, I would just do the, I would just say the opposite of what people were saying. Yeah, yeah, he admitted that too. Yeah. It was funny, like before he fully admitted it, someone finally asked him on Twitter, like, where is this coffee shop? And he said it was like the coffee bean and tea leaf in Brentwood, which is a, if there's any neighborhood in LA that is a uh, Republican, Probably Brentwood. Brentwood would be probably one of those. Yeah. So not really the like hipster uh, you know, haven. I would <laughs> the the only hipsters I could think living in Brentwood would be like hipster movie stars, and even then that's a stretch. Yeah. It's lots of lawyers and doctors. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if if he was like yeah down the stump town down in the arts district, then it's like okay yeah yeah sure. yeah. I mean, there's definitely neighborhoods where. Well, none of us is believable. He would never <laughs> step foot in Echo Park, Elliot. Come on. I'm going to get shot. Oh, God. But with young Jacob off Twitter, it seems like most of the wind was now taken out of his sails. And in addition to that, USA Today published a second article that day, pretty strongly debunking what had been Jacob Wall's magnum opus of incompetence, his investigation into whether or not special counsel Robert Mueller was a rapist. Now, we're not going to recap that whole thing. We made multiple videos covering it at the time that yeah. you can go watch for the folk recap or if you give us another view. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, basically it was uh, the most incompetent political smear job in the history of political smear jobs. Um, just astoundingly stupid. Yes. And, and for the grand reveal, Jacob, Jacob's Mueller accuser didn't even show up. Uh, she later said the whole thing was bullshit and that she'd been duped into participating and uh, she had bailed once she realized what was going on. Just just a complete catastrophic failure. Yeah. So really, please, if you haven't seen those videos, go watch those videos. Elliot, put them in the description. Yeah, I'll put them down there. Yeah. Uh, Jacob Wall is an absolutely ridiculous person, though. Just uh, astoundingly dumb. But anyways, it's also important to recap the fact that the whole reason Jacob Wall had an audience for this bullshit in the first place was because when he was 17 years old, he was the world's youngest hedge fund manager, which got him interviews on various news channels until at age 19 when he was banned for life from trading futures because he'd lied to his investors. There's a pattern here. He's 21 now. He's only 21? Yeah. In the video that you, I, there was, they put up a documentary about him. The lies like, age you, I think. Yeah, he's just like, what's his name? The bald guy from the Trump Stephen administration. Stephen Miller? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, something about- I'm older than Miller. Something about this kind of life. It ages it you. It ages you. So he's tw apparently 21. But even at such a young age, he's already done a prolific amount of stupid bullshit with his life. Which, okay, now you're caught up. This brings us to now. You think just because Jacob Wall lost his Twitter account that he's done doing this whole thing? Absolutely not. There is no way that you're going to put the brakes on this kid. No. This, this, this wonder kid. This trade has no brakes. And the briefest way to sum up Jacob Wall as a person is that he, one, loves this president and very much wants to see the president's enemies destroyed, and two... He is the king of the self-owned, with basically everything he does blowing up in his own face. I think, we, and we've covered a lot of dumb people on this show, I think he might be the most prolific self-owner yeah, no, like, of all time. Almost every single thing he does is, is blows up in his face. Yeah. He's, like, uh, he's like a fucking Looney Tunes character. He is. He is yeah. Wile E. Coyote. Absolutely. Yeah. He's the political Wile E. Coyote. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as we've seen so far, the self ownage and the you know uh, love of the president and hate for the president's enemies they go hand in hand. And there's perhaps only one other person out there whose dumb patriotism and stunning incompetence matches Jacob Wolf's. That person is Laura Loomer. We've covered her before as well, but she's also banned from Twitter and has also made a career out of media stunts that just make her look like a dim-witted lunatic. Mm -hmm. It was only a matter of time before Loomer and Wool combined their powers in a major crossover event. The crossover that gets it wrong. <laughs> and that's what happened last month when the two of them headed out to Minnesota to do some hard-hitting investigative journalism. Okay, I want to bring it back. I think that Laura Loomer is Wiley Coyote and Jacob Wall is Elmer Fudd. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and they have now crossed over into an amazing Looney Tunes episode of just complete failure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, when Elliot speaks of this hard-hitting investigative journalism that was potentially going to go down in Minnesota. Huge air quotes on that. Yeah. We obviously mean that they plan to somehow confront U.S. Representative Ilan Omar about the completely unsubstantiated rumor that she married her own brother in order to commit immigration and student loan fraud. It's a rumor based entirely on hearsay, anonymous internet posts, and straight up misinformation. And you can bet your ass if this theory had any legs to it, Fox News would already be all over it. But they aren't. So that's who we're working with here. People that make Fox News seem sane by comparison. In addition to that, though, they wanted to show that Minneapolis' Muslim community was some sort of ticking time bomb of terrorist activity and that parts of Minneapolis are under Sharia law, which is all pretty Islamophobic, but it's very on brand for these two. Yeah, so anyway, while in Minnesota last month, Wall and Loomer, the cop show coming to CBS this fall, and soon to be canceled immediately after. Wool and Loomer, they did a bunch of shitty Periscope live streams in which they mainly just repeatedly begged people for donations because this is a grift, folks. It's a scam. Uh, to drive home why they needed this money, they repeatedly claimed to be in serious danger in fucking Minneapolis and in need of increased security measures in addition to the bulletproof vests and armored cars and ex-military escorts that they'd hired to protect them in case Representative Omar sent a Sharia hit squad after them. Uh, Minnesota, Minneapolis is one of the safest cities in the country, but... Also, too cold for crime. Yeah. A little too cold out. Too cold. Just like the Jussie Smollett thing. It's like, you sure this happened? Mm -mm. Pretty cold out. Mm -mm. Now, at one point, they claimed that the death threats that they'd received while in Minnesota... Minneapolis got so scary that they had reported them to the local police department. And uh, it turns out that while Loomer and Wall were out in the cold in Minnesota risking their lives, they were filming the whole thing for a short documentary. And that documentary was released this week. It was the one that I watched. <laughs> I watched the whole damn thing. It is a slog. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> whew, yeah. It's titled Importing Ilhan. And uh, while the video description calls it a fast-paced documentary, <laughs> As I just indicated, the 25-minute running time, it feels like forever. Because literally nothing happens. Ex nothing happens except for the same music cues over and over <laughs> and over again. They go to Representative Omar's house, intending to ask her to sign a document swearing she never married her brother, but hey, she's not home. Which, that scene alone is magical. It's like five minutes of Laura Loomer. Like, she's made a career out of standing. Dun, 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 bum. Like, the music's just building. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my God, what's gonna happen? And then she knocks and it's like, da da da, da da da, da da da. Oh, I guess she's not home. Her, Laura Loomer's entire legacy is standing outside of places yelling. Yeah, and being uncomfortable. Yeah. Because every place she goes that she stands in front of is just in uncomfortable. In New York, she was freezing. Yeah. Here, she's probably freezing. Yeah. Didn't she pee her pants too? Uh, she, she said she was going to. Mm. So that's why she got out of the handcuffs at Twitter.com HQ. That's why I calf now. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> So after, Probably does. after this very embarrassing failure, they head to her office downtown to try to meet her there. And again, no one is there. As we've said, the soundtrack is fucking ridiculous. It's like a royalty-free Christopher Nolan movie soundtrack desperately trying to add suspense to people literally just standing around. It's like, it, it would be so funny to just remove the music because then it would literally just be a shot of someone standing. Yeah. Yeah. Standing outside a door. Put a laugh track on it. Also, they're like, that's weird. Why isn't she in her office? And they're there at like literally the stroke of 9 a.m. Yeah. And the office said it's like, it opens at 9 a.m. And it, it was like a weekend. Yeah. It's like, yeah, people are probably showing up a little late. It's fucking Saturday. Yeah. Maybe, maybe come in the middle of the day during like actual office hours. Or, 
She's in DC. Yeah, it was also, it was like that weekend was that the week before had been a congressional recess. So she may or may not have been in Minnesota, but they were the weekend before. So she might have already been heading back to DC at that point. Congress people live in DC most of the time. Yeah. They come back to their districts sometimes on weekends, sometimes on recesses. But if you want to confront a representative, you should go to Washington, DC. Yeah. Where they work at their job. Mm hmm. Anyways, the documentary also shows us some of the threats that Jacob and Laura were getting while in Minneapolis. And we get to see that Jacob did, in fact, visit a local police station to report these threats. Mm -hmm. And right here is a good time to point out that this trip to Minnesota last month happened just before Jacob Wool got banned from Twitter for openly admitting that he was spreading misinformation and using fake accounts to push his agenda. The timeline here, the documentary just came out, but the events were just a few days before he got banned. Mm -hmm. Now, we're getting the documentary now, but while it was being filmed, Jacob still had his Twitter account and was still, as he happily admitted to USA Today, running other fake Twitter accounts. Yeah. So, you might get a hunch at where this is going, right? Anyways, here's the threats that Jacob Wall received, which he reported to the police, as shown in the documentary. Uh, that, that's a pretty serious threat there. Yeah. And here's some tweets from NBC News reporter Ben Collins from last month. After reporting on Jacob Wall's Twitter suspension, Collins tweeted out various examples of Jacob Wall's fake accounts. And hey, wait a second. This Drake Holmes account has a profile pic that sure looks a lot like the profile pic of the guy Jacob Wall reported to the police for death threats. Hmm. In fact, that's the same exact picture. Oh, what are the odds? <sighs> Must be twins. Uh... But uh, yes, folks, it appears that quite likely, in fact, almost certainly, Jacob Wall sent himself death threats and then not only filed a, f a false police report, filmed himself doing it. King of the cell phone. The, he, he triple cell phone. He, he, first he did the bad thing. Then he reported the bad thing as if he was not him doing it. That's all, that's illegal. And mm. then he filmed himself doing it as a backup to prove that he really did it. Not too smart, this guy. <laughs> Back to that Drake Holmes account, though. Or, yeah, the, the fake Drake Holmes guy. One of Jacob Wall's lesser-known signature moves is his terrible spelling, and that's fully on display here. Pretty much certifies it for me. The last name Holmes, H-O-L-M-E-S, isn't even spelled correctly in the Twitter handle, and the ridiculous straw man bio reads, Diversity Coordinator, Minneapolis born and raised, hater of racist, homophones, and bigots. So it seems this Drake Holmes guy really hates words that sound the same but have different spellings and meanings. In fact, he hates homophones as much as he hates racism and bigotry. Oh, and according to local Minneapolis journalist Tony Webster, who's been stuck following this whole shit show for the last month, uh, the guy used in the Drake Holmes user picture, uh, he actually lives in Minneapolis and is uh, looking into potential legal action currently. As he should. Uh, because, you know, his face is tied to... A, uh, even though it's fake. Yeah, Jacob will a, a clearly- violent threat. Yeah, he's just like, I need, uh, just give me Minnesota face. And he's like, all right, there's a guy. Use that in the account. This now is why he's begging for money. He wants to get that Getty Images account so he can get some royalty free faces. Well, he already used his Getty Images account when he was making the profiles for his agents at Surefire Intelligence. Uh, but he ran out of money and had to use Christoph Waltz. Yeah, so and see uh, how. he ran out of celebrities, so he just used his own face. Yeah as uh, Matthew the, the Cohen. lower lower one, yeah. lower part of it. Anyways, in addition to possibly being sued by the guy whose face Jacob Wall used to make false death threats against himself, who just so happens to live in the same police jurisdiction in which those threats were reported. Not great. Filing a false police report, that's of course a crime. And under Minnesota state law, providing false information to a law enforcement officer is a misdemeanor, punishable by up to 90 days in jail, a fine of up to $1,000 or both. Let's hope it's both. Yeah. This literally just happened to Jussie Smollett. Yeah, and uh, oddly enough, it, in this documentary, in this absolutely pointless documentary, so at the beginning, they're like talking to local uh, Somalian Muslims in Minneapolis, trying to get trying to get a real gotcha moment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and all they're saying is like, I don't know that much about Representative Omar. Uh, what, the worst that they get someone to say is like, I think she's moving a little too fast. She needs to slow down. But they, they go to like the mall and one woman they interview, it's like, I mean, she doesn't, like, she doesn't define us. It's like, you wouldn't say Jussie Smollett defines Chicago. Chicago's got a lot of things going for it. It's not just Jussie Smollett. So 
Ilhan Omar is not the only thing going from Minneapolis. And it's yeah. just, it's we had like, Prince. They fucking featured, of all the quotes to pull, they pulled the one about Jesse Smollett when in Who a documentary. filed a face report, when, false report. Yeah, in a documentary sh- where Jake Wall films himself filing a false police report because he's an incredibly stupid person. The only thing that would have made this better if, is if the camera panned back around and it was Fred Armisen doing the whole thing for documentary now. <laughs> Then it would have been like, wow, wow, what a meta joke. A, a long running one at that. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, as of when we're recording this, Minneapolis police haven't yet said whether they're going to pursue these charges. They fucking should. Yeah. But they, so. they have provided journalists with a redacted copy of the evidence that Jacob Wall brought to them. So they're definitely aware of this. Yeah. And that confirms that he did, in fact, <laughs> it like the funniest thing is like, uh, he could have just filmed himself walking up to a police station counter. Because, like, the shot, it's, like, from the back. You see him walk in. He could have just been like, hey, do you know where the nearest bathroom is? And just dubbed over, like, anything else. Yeah, his whole shit's fake anyway. Like, so. it, yeah, it's like, why did he need to actually file a police report? Also, another thing is, like, on his first day in Minneapolis, uh, he did a Periscope live stream at a Walmart. And then uh, later in, like, one of the videos, you see in the background, like, a brand new printer. Uh, and it's like a brand that you can only buy in Walmart, mm-hmm. meaning he bought a printer on his first day in Minneapolis before receiving any threats, not knowing that he would receive any threats. He just bought a printer just in case he needed to print something out, like, As a, you do. like a death threat to bring to the police. <clears throat> He's such a stupid person. Yeah. Now, hilariously, the third major character in this shit show, conservative commentator Ollie Alexander, who calls himself a philosopher uh, and accompanied Wall and Loomer on their trip, uh, he had to immediately distance himself from the whole damn thing because even for him, this was a bad look. In a Periscope stream, after all this blew up in their faces, he called Jacob Wall a little sociopathic Mm. and described himself as a victim in this hoax. Um, At the same time, though, he's posted various tweets defending Jacob Wall and questioning whether Jacob Wall did in fact send those threats to himself. I don't know. This might be the deep state. Could be. Uh... So yeah, he's clearly just covering his ass for whichever way the wind blows on this one. In any case, Jacob Wall set out to make a documentary exposing a congresswoman for crimes. And the only thing to come out of that documentary was pretty clear evidence that he himself committed a crime. Mm -hmm. Which is really some next level self-ownage, even for the self-owned king himself, Jacob Wall. Yeah, Jacob Wall, the self-owned king. The cell phone king. And uh, we'll keep you covered on uh, all of this I'm as sure, it develops, because I'm sure that there's going to be plenty more to talk about. Like, at this point, Jacob Wall, the only thing that's going to stop him is actual jail time. I don't even know. The think man, that will. there are no breaks. The momentum. You don't want to put him in jail. He'll start doing 15 push ups, and then he's unstoppable. Yeah. And plus, it's like the fact that he also tried to frame. Robert Mueller for that thing. It's like... Yeah, that's all going to come back around to bite him eventually. Yeah, it, like, like it seemed like Mueller's he, got other things on his plate right yeah, now. Yeah, it seemed like that was a crime that could probably be prosecuted, but, you know, nothing came of it at the time. But I, I think that might come back around to him as well. Yeah. Prolific. Anyways, before we get into the headlines part of the show, it's time for a word from this week's sponsor, starting with Honey. Do you ever buy something online and find out later that you missed a discount? Damn. Well, thanks to Honey, the free browser extension, you can always get the price on best price on Amazon without lifting a finger. Honey automatically goes to work whenever you shop on Amazon or other places. Yeah, works and on pretty much anywhere you can buy stuff. I got a discount on Expedia today. I got a hotel room for my mom who's visiting yeah. and uh, it's got 10% off. I'm always getting deals. Uh, it compares the prices of every seller that carries whatever item you're looking for. They even factor in shipping, sales tax, and Amazon Prime status to make sure you're getting the lowest, lowest total price. Uh, it shows the best deal every time. Even if Amazon doesn't, it even has a price tracker so you can see if it's gone up or down. Very useful. Mm. It's like having your own personal shopping assistant. Honey's so easy to use, it feels like cheating. But it's not. And it's legal. It's very legal and very cool. Yeah. It's a smart, automated deal finder that gets us and millions of other shoppers out there the best price on Amazon and many other sites every single time. You can try it on basically any website that accepts coupon codes and there's a good chance you're going to save some money that you didn't think you would. More than 10 million people are already using Honey to save money. They've got over 10,000 five-star reviews on the Google Chrome store. And Time Magazine says, it's basically free money. So next time you're shopping on Amazon or anywhere else online, don't wonder whether you found the best deal. Add Honey and get the best price automatically. And you can add Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash weird. That's joinhoney.com slash weird. Link in the description. Honey. The smart shopping assistant that saves you time and money. 
And also, this episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Domains, websites, online stores, marketing tools, analytics. Wow, Squarespace does all those things. It's the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. And they've just added a whole new feature, email campaigns. Say more, sell more, stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns, providing consistent content from website to email, powerful editing tools to make it your own, customizable layouts for any message, and mobile editing so you can send anytime, anywhere. Squarespace lets you quickly and easily create a beautiful website, whether it's for your business, your art, your hentai, mm. I don't know if that's allowed, your products, your ideas, you name it. Furry enthusiast websites. Yeah, snatch that domain. Anime enthusiast websites. Mm -hmm. Could be yours. Everything's optimized uh, for mobile right out of the box, too. It's got analytics that help you grow in real time. There's nothing to patch or upgrade ever, and they've got 24-7 award-winning customer support. Head over to squarespace.com slash weeklyweird for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code weeklyweird to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace.com slash weeklyweird, offer code weeklyweird. Again, links in the description. Thanks for sponsoring the show. Now let's get into some headlines. Okay, here you go. A dangerous drug called catnip cocktail is on the rise, and it's driving people mad. Uh, what is it doing and how is it different than over-the-counter gas station spice? Well, this is marketed as a, a, a sleep aid for pets. And, uh, you know, the, the beautiful loophole of all this is that... Um, Very legal. Well, supplements, when you're selling supplements for humans, that's already, like, kind of fair game. But if you're selling supplements for dogs, you can pretty much put whatever the fuck you want in it and just say, hey, not for human use. Yeah. But uh, it turns out it's basically uh, just what you see in like GHB, like roofie pills. Mm. So, uh, and people are buying them. So how's it driving yeah. them mad and not putting them to sleep? Uh, because it's, it's full of caffeine. Oh. So it's like that whole thing where like if you take a roofie or like a sleeping pill and you sleep through the initial. Or you stay awake through yeah, it? Yeah, if you stay awake through it, yeah, yeah, then yeah, you yeah. get super high. It does that. Hmm. But uh, yeah, that's the that's the cool new uh, street, street drug. drug is... Um, Sleeping pills Who the fuck has the lamest name ever? Catnip cocktail. You guys mm. want to do some catnip cocktail? No. Mm. Gross. Catnip co cocktail sounds like when you like mix indica and sativa in your bong. I mean, that's just, most weed is a mix of both. Well, I don't know. It just has the worst name possible for this. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a product for animals. Yeah, is that what it's called for the animals too? Yeah, well, it's sold as an animal product. And it's called catnip cocktail? Yeah. And humans call that as the street slang term for it? It's it's the brand name. <laughs> this is so stupid. You literally go to this, the, the shady supplement store and you're like, hey, grab me some of that cat in a cocktail. That's like a whole for barrel. My, for my cat. It's like people who go up to the thing like a Petco and they're like, you know, these uh, humans can eat these too. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Gross. I only feed my dog meals that I would eat myself. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's dead. Yeah. Died of heart disease. That's why my dog has diabetes. <laughs> my, a diabetes and heart disease, it's got it all. But it's flying <laughs> high on some catnip cocktail, so yeah. it's living a good life. And I do the same. MAGA cool. artist sues the Smithsonian for not putting up his pro-Trump painting. And uh, you really got to see this painting to to understand. It's the, it's the one that was at CPAC that's uh, 8 feet tall and 16 feet wide. It looks features. like it belongs in the Denver airport. It looks like that style. Yeah, it looks like something, uh, what was it, like No Fear, those uh, yeah. folders from the 90s where yeah, just yeah. like everything's a little too hyper-realistic. Uh, it's not good art. It's bad art. And this guy, he, he asked the Smithsonian to put it up in their presidential portrait gallery, and they, 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 they flat out told him, they're like, it's not very good. So he's suing them. He's saying it's, they're politically biased, and that's why they're not putting it next to like all these other like very distinguished portraits of past presidents. He might have a case because even though the uh, Donald Trump robot looked like shit, Disney still put it in the Hall of Presidents. Well, the theory there is that they were, they originally built a Hillary robot. And, <laughs> they uh, just had they to change like, it? Oops. Uh, let's put a wig on it. Yeah. Well, that's cool. They are, are they the same body shape, body size? Um, yeah. Hmm. I mean, from far away, who can tell? Who can tell the difference? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, he's probably not going to win. I mean, yeah, it's an exciting case. Uh, it's really, it's literally... Landmark. <laughs> Landmark case. You can't deep like, It's like the, the fucking audacity of just being like, why wouldn't the most prestigious, like, presidential portrait gallery in the country accept my fucking weird-ass fan my art of the My giant president? fucking fan yeah. art. Yeah. Yeah. My just gaudy, decadent, over-the-top, hideous painting of an American flag being rescued by a bald eagle while, like, Donald Trump's head, which is the size of the planet Earth, is looking on proudly mm -hmm. 
Fuck you. Wearable penis camera lets you record your achievements. Yeah, it's a cock ring with a little uh, little camera on it. That's kind of an interesting viewpoint. The, I'd like to see that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, they it look it, uh, to me. I imagine it looks like that. Uh, Remember the uh, uh, Be Begging Strips commercial with the dog nose where it just like goes around the house? Yeah, well, now you can like, make that video with your dick. Make it big, 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 big hand. Pussy, 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 pussy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, what are the uh, achievements? I I don't know, uh, but it it uh, their website they <laughs> they have a video showing it off, and it's the funniest. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Like, is it, it the first person view or the first dick yeah, view? Yeah, so it, I I would have assumed like for their demonstration video they would show people having sex, but they apparently they want to like demonstrate a little more cleanly. Just punching a clitoris. They uh, so they <laughs> they shot it like you would shoot a GoPro video. Like they they hired a, a like professional base jumper, and they had him do base jumping. He didn't use his actual penis, like it's it's a big dildo, but it's a so it's this <laughs> it's this fucking action cam with a first person view of his Same ace jump, but with a big floppy dildo in the middle of the shot. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing. What are the achievements? I, penis base jumping, I guess. I guess, like, yeah. Well, you just I mean I think they mean achievements, just like your sexual achievements. I don't see. I think it's it'd be fun like for yourself. Don't go show anyone your fucking penis videos, but like. Yeah, like going around the house being like, hey, hey, whoa. But like having sex with it, like you're just, the camera's just yeah. slamming repeatedly. I can't into a see vagina. that being good pornographic footage. Yeah. Or it's just like hitting someone in the nose. Yeah. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, this is like, I don't I don't see how this would be really like arousing footage. Real for niche anyone. product. Yeah. No. But hey, if that gets you hard, thought of that. Let us know. And it'll keep your dick hard, because it's a cock ring. See, it's functional, too. Yeah. Congressmen debated the merits of Nickelback during Thursday's session. Do they have? They not have anything more important to do? Uh, they. I, I can tell you for a fact they probably had way more important things to do, but uh, no, they, uh, they were arguing about the census and how it's, uh, like, you know, you use census numbers to come up with the number of representatives and, you know, how... It's, it's very important information, and some places were not counting uh, their prison population as part of the census uh, for certain areas. And so these two guys were arguing about it, and they were like, "We already had the voters already had a referendum on this. Only like, only like four people out of several hundred voters agreed with you. And that's like about the same percentage of people that are fans of Nickelback." And the other guy's like, Zink. "How dare you, sir? <laughs> I'll have you know, I am a big fan of Nickelback. I will not stand for this slander." Get him out. And that one, can you guess which party likes Nickelback? Libertarian. No, he's a Republican. Oh. But then the Democrat did later say, like, all right, look, I do have one one Nickelback song in my playlist. He felt bad. Yeah. It's all typical, stupid, though. Typical Democrat just bending over backwards yeah. to apologize. Yeah. Just a big pushover. Yeah. Oh, I'm all right. I guess Nickelback's pretty okay. As Nickelback would say, I'm sorry. And I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. No one should take out their aggression on other people's musical tastes. No. But don't worry. I mean, Chad Kroger's doing fine. He's got the grocery stores. Yeah, he's doing so. fine. He, As we've learned, if yeah. you have that last name, you're officially part of the business. Chad Kroger? Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte went to an event honoring women. Then he referred to them as bitches. Mm. Which is just on brand. Very, uh, he, he said a bunch of other, like, pretty... <laughs> Terrible shit. Oh, you don't say. Uh, yeah, he was like, it's like people say I, I don't respect women, but I have two wives, so that's double the respect. Uh, and then he was oh like, oh my god. He uh, at, at this event, he's like presenting awards to like female like police officers and like yeah. military. He's like, you ladies are making it real hard for men like me to do our thing. Too much complaining. Uh, yeah, he's like just a total like. Yeah, he's like uh, if the dad from All in the Family ran a country. Yeah. Hey, meathead. Look, I know this day is all about honoring you lady cops for your achievements, but I'll have you know, this Me Too shit is not going to fly with me. <laughs> You're distracting me. All this squawking. Oh, stop harassing me. Yeah. You're going to get those things caught on a chain link fence. It's bad. Yeah. It's But it's on brand for Rodrigo Duterte. Yeah. Who is, uh, proving himself to be I mean, a this, terrible person. This is a man over who over uh, previously... Uh, he he re, re, he expressed regret that uh, a woman that was raped uh, he didn't get the first uh, 
he didn't go get to go first. T. Um, yeah, he said some pretty reprehensible shit, but he's hugely popular over the Philippines. I don't fucking get it. It's what? a nice country, but I would stay the hell away from uh, Duterte, wherever he is. Squirrel emerges victorious in treetop showdown with bald eagle. Yeah, our national bird's a fucking... Just a shitty bird. Yeah, they're dicks. They're dicks and they're lazy. Mm. Like, they uh, they get most of their food through theft. They steal it. Like, other animals will, like, catch prey, and then the bald eagle will come in and be like, Get out of the way! It's mine! And they'll just scare them off with their size. Was but, it trying to st- steal the squirrel's nuts? Well, the squirrel, it's like, uh, I guess it's squirrel breeding season, so the squirrel was trying to, like, make a fucking nest. Or, I don't know. They, they needed room, and the bald eagle... <laughs> they needed room. The bald eagle was, like, perched up on this tree, and the squirrel, he just kept he kept getting, like, close enough to harass it, but, like, far enough away where he couldn't get attacked, and the bald eagle finally gave up. He's like, fine, take it! So, yeah, uh, uh, our, our national bird, a absolutely massive bird with claws the size of human hands, uh, gave up mm. in a fight against a fucking squirrel. So I say... We make the squirrel the new national animal. Yeah. The United States squirrels. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, like, squirrels, they're, they're a lot like a lot of people in this country. They're always doomsday prepping. Yeah. Hiding they're, shit. They're packing it away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're, always, we're always running out in front of cars. Yeah. No. Just like so many people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, moving on. YouTuber arrested after crossing U.S. to threaten Google for deleted channel. Turns out it was his wife. There's a similar story to the guy who, like, destroyed his whole house because he thought one of his wife destroyed one of his action figures. Yeah. Similar uh, man-child mentality. Yeah, this yeah. guy, uh, he was convinced that YouTube had erroneously deleted his channel. He, he tr- drove across the entire fucking country. He wasn't armed, but he did have several baseball bats in his car. And yeah. uh, he he got caught because he, he was getting gas at a gas station on the way over there. And, like, he was just... So, Talking about it out loud? No, he's just so fired up that he like tra- he trashed the bathroom. And the gas station owner was like, what the fuck? Called the cops. And the cops were like, sir, what are you doing? And he's like, look, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just really pumped to like go over to Google headquarters and uh, give them peace of my mind about them deleting my channel. And they're like, well, are you planning on getting violent with them? He's like, well, I mean, if it comes to that. <laughs> so what they- is up with people just... Fucking telling everyone their crimes. I don't think he's very smart. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, so yeah, they. How they, did he get a wife? Uh, I don't know. It sounds like she wants out though, because it turned out she was the one that deleted the channel. She's yeah. like, my stupid husband thinks he's gonna be a YouTuber, wasting all his damn time. So she just went on there and deleted it. Lacroix maker's CEO compares job to caring for a handicapped person, blames injustice for poor sales. No, it's not injustice. It's bubbly, more accessible, yeah. cheaper, and that's it. The reason LaCroix was so good for so long is because they completely cornered the market. Yeah. They stumbled into the fact that people liked flavored sparkling water. Mm -hmm. And then immediately competition starts. And that's why the poor sales. Well, their CEO also has like a long history of like every earnings report just saying something uh, incredibly stupid for a CEO to say. Yeah. Uh, And yeah, the latest one, he's like, it's like, yeah, you know, taking care of a brand. It's sort of like taking care of a, a handicapped relative. Like they can't take care of themselves. They can't feed themselves. You got to do it all for them. Are you saying that what all are you your doing, sir? Idiots! I maybe he does this just to like take the pressure off all the other bad news. I it could be because uh, like I remember National Beverage Company. The company, they've been doing great for like two years. Well, okay, so I was watching their stock for a long time, and they were skyrocketing. Yeah. And then like I can't remember what exactly he said, but he said something incredibly stupid at uh, a shareholder meeting, and then it. it started dropping and it hasn't yeah. like recovered since then. Well, it, the reason is they had a, a very nice part of the market covered to themselves. And then Pepsi was like, oh, we could do this. Yeah. And just created bubbly. And like, I don't and know, there's sell a it bazillion for like others. Slightly yeah, cheaper, Kroger yeah. has their own, Target has their own. So it's like, yeah. oh, people want to buy this. Of course the market's going to react. That's why the sales are bad. Yeah. But you know what? You're still drinking it. There's nothing wrong with it. There's just cheaper. I don't know. They are they are being sued for supposedly putting like cockroach poison in it. I don't know how true that is. Well, it's like a it's like a it's like a chemical that is also included in. That. Actually, cockroach poison makes you stronger. Yeah, it's really good. If you just have a little bit of cockroach poison, yeah, you become immune to cockroaches. Yeah, you, cockroach is the strongest animal in the world. You take one sip and then you go around the corners of your room. Yeah, you spread out the Lacroix. That way, it's, you get rid of the cockroaches. <laughs> they just gotta lean into it. Mm-hmm. You know. Stage four cancer patients hospital room searched by Missouri police for marijuana. 
Yeah, this was a video that was going around. Um, Fucked up. Pretty, uh, pretty infuriating. It's like, you know, of all, like, cops, you guys, there's there's plenty of laws to enforce out there. Yeah. Um, a person who's probably going to die from uh, a very uh, painful, uh, shitty cancer who may or may not be using medical marijuana, which is completely illegal in Missouri, by the way. Yeah. Prob it shouldn't be your fucking priority. Don't bother sick people. Stay out of the hospital, like, cops. Yeah, just stay the fuck out of the hospital. Yeah, this is so... These smug fucking cops are just like, well, what do you want us to do? Not enforce the law? And the guy's like, medical marijuana is legal in this state. <laughs> don't you know that? <laughs> You're a cop. No, I don't. And I'm proud of that. Ugh, God. Hmm. Well, yeah, that's mad. That's what it's, it makes me really mad. I kept seeing the headline, and every time I saw it, I was just like, these fucking fucks. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know that it was legal medically there, but that makes it even worse. Yeah. Because it's like, you're in a fucking hospital. Yeah, so they're like, they bust in this guy. Wait, hold on. They got fentanyl in this hospital. Yeah. Well, well, oh, well. Looks like I've just made the biggest bust in the city. Yes, sir, I went down to the left. You wouldn't, be, you wouldn't believe how much drugs they got in this big white building down in yeah. the center of town? It's wild. Quite it's an operation crazy. they got going there. And they always got trucks going in and out with with sirens flashing and helicopters taking off. You I should, think there's something going you on. You should see the people inside. They're all in bed just strung out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah. Stay out of hospitals, cops. Yeah, leave sick people alone. Let them do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. Especially if it's just weed. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. Seriously. Man given three month curfew for killing seagull that swooped for his chips. This is a British story. So they were fries. Right. Yeah. Freedom fries. Yeah, he uh, he like kicked the seagull or something. The seagull swooped for his chips. Oh, and he kept like, coming out of the sky or something? Uh, well, it knocked the whole bag of chips out of his hand. This man was very upset. Oh, of course. He was enjoying those chips. So after it did, he reached, managed to grab the seagull by the foot, and then uh, bashed it against a wall until it died. In this is like on a boardwalk area, full view of like, you know, children, kids, yeah. kids and families. Apparently, just you know, really upsetting shit. Hey, I mean, the beaches in uh, in the UK are depressing on their own. Yeah, you don't need to see a guy beating a fucking. Well, we made it to the beach. There it is, the gray skies, there it is, the English Channel <laughs> in all of its glory. Yes. Oh look, there's a man beating a seagull to death. Mm, yes. Seagulls As are, is tradition. Seagulls are dicks, so I don't feel terrible about it. But uh, it, yeah, it's it's the only time I've bad. Uh, the only time I've considered murdering a seagull is. Um, in uh, at like Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco, yeah. the seagulls there are like, oh, they're gigantic. They're too. huge, and yeah. they will like they don't give a fuck. They'll snap it. Yeah, well, like they'll they will literally steal food. I've, I if you stand there long enough, you'll see them steal food from people because of all the sourdough bread. Yeah, they got a taste for it. Now mm. I want more. Mm. The San Francisco treat. That bush man used to keep them away from there. And yep. He died. Yep. So now he's our problem. Same with those seals. They'll get you. Mm -hmm. uh, Rapper self-made cash who wears gold credit card ne necklace charged with credit card theft. Yeah, uh, turns out some of that cash not self-made. Mm. Also turns out, like he was literally on his social media. He was like, "Look at all these credit cards I stole. Here's my credit card skimmer machine. DM me and I'll I'll give you <laughs> tips for credit card theft." <laughs> you fucking idiot! What are you doing? Self-made. It was a cool necklace though. I'd never seen it before. It's like a gold, like thick credit card necklace like that's pretty yeah. cool i yeah. like that but like gold isn't even like anywhere near the best credit card it's like bronze silver gold and then like platinum titanium and then the black card yeah so if you really want to flex you get a black card yeah black's hard to see that was the whole fucking scam with billy mcfarland that's right was it was perceived value mm -hmm. like the card was essentially worthless and his perks didn't exist but the fact that it was black and weighed more than a normal uh, credit card mm -hmm. was the appeal well, I don't think self-made cash is going to have a chance to fix that for you because it sounds like he's probably going to jail for a long time hmm. and they don't let you wear a whole lot of jewelry in there. So anyways, what's up, your boy self-made cash? Just documenting my crimes. You guys think that's pretty cool? Woo, leave a like. Hey, hey, have you heard about my buddy Jacob Wall? We're going to go file some false police reports. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> woo! Uh, and final headline, Lamb of God frontman organizes Richmond Kazoo counterparty against Westboro Baptist Church. Good for him. Yeah. These metal guys. They're a little very creative very, with their protests. Yeah. And he, uh, it wasn't just kazoos. It was like Vuvuzelas. Mm. Um, this is in Richmond, Virginia? Yeah. They should get Guar to show up. 
Uh, It'd be great to see Guar facing facing off against the Westboro Baptist Church. I think this already happened, oh, but apparently man. it was a really good turnout. Just a bunch of like metalheads in all black, just playing like the Sanford and Son song in Kazoo. That's great. Yeah. Thanks, Lamb of God. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're the real Lamb of God. True. Anyways, uh, watch our other videos from this week. We got a brand new Tech News Day about uh, Elizabeth Warren trying to shake up the tech industry. And the tech Whoa. industry uh, not wanting Not that. taking it very well. Also, a brand new news dump where uh, James Gunn's back. He's doing Guardians in addition to Suicide Squad. And Movie Pass is back in the news. Woo. So check that one out. Hit up our Patreon. Check out our sponsors. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day. See ya. Stay safe out there, kids. See you soon. Don't Don't document your crimes. Don't document them. Not even with a penis cam.